Lean is an important value chain for going for a sustainable society. It can be used to replace fossil-based products. Lignocity is a unique test bed in the world. We can produce uh, lignin from uh, different uh, black licorice that is, comes from different paper mills and uh, we can scale it up from uh, only a few grams up to tons. Lignin in one centen is the glue in wood, but you can extract it uh, in the process we do here in Ligna City. And instead of burning it in the paper mill, we can uh, create a higher value with uh, evaluating the lignin into uh, different products. It can be in asphalt, it can be made carbon fiber out of it, and it can be made bioplastic and many other applications. Uh, the test bed is located uh, as a neighbor to Nordic paper where the black liquor comes from, that we produce lignin out of. Within the test bed Ligna City, you also get contact with the, the research institute RISE. We can help companies that are interested in the lignin value chains, from the raw material lignin to the end products. So here at RISE we have resources to work on the lignin that produce in Ligna City. The, we work on the different applications such as uh, thermoplastics, thermosets, chemicals and fuels from lignin. So in this lab we make lignin based carbon fiber and use it in different applications. For example in this car you can see the roof is a lignin based carbon fiber composite that the carbon fiber were made here in this lab. Also this car has a lithium ion battery that in this battery also we use the lignin based carbon fibers. In Ligna City, we want to uh, welcome uh, small and medium-sized uh, enterprises uh, that we can help to take the leap from idea to market in small and safe steps, which reduces uh, the risk to scale up. Our time here at RICE was, was a key in our development. It helped us to have our product ready for the market. And now we are moving on and, and starting our demo plant unit outside Stockholm, where we will produce 2,000 tons per year of our material right now. This is one of the end application of what we do at Rencom, using lignin to make plastic bags. The name of it is Renol, and we can mix it with bioplastics or fossil-based plastics, depending on the applications you want to do with it. We in Värmland is strong in bioeconomy, partly because we have a lot of forests here and the skills in how to create different applications out of the wood, but we want to grow even better and bigger on the bioeconomy, and lignin is one track. Here we have space for new possibilities with conference room, facilities and uh, laboratory. Hi, and a very welcome to uh, Ligna City's first webinar after the summer. Some of you have uh, seen our previous webinars and some not. And if you're interested to uh, look at what we have presented before, you can visit our homepage, uh, Ligna City, and there you uh, find them all recorded. And also today's event is recorded. And uh, myself is Maria Almholt, working with project management and business development at Rice Testbed Ligna City and the webinar we present uh, together with our partners. And the speakers today is uh, Leif Lykkebeck and also Erik Dahlén. And uh, Erik is first out. Uh, so I wonder, Erik, uh, how are you today? Just fine. And I'm very glad for to be able to talk to, to a lot of people about my favorite uh, subject, uh, getting resources in, in scale-up companies. Excellent. And uh, for the best uh, experience of this event, uh, all viewers have the possibility in their upper right corner to choose uh, which view they prefer. They can have a speaker's view or a gallery view, uh, and you can play around with it during the event to see what suits you best. Uh, and if you have any questions to any of the speakers, uh, then write them in the chat, and we will uh, respond to as many questions as possible after both Eric and Leif has uh, talked. Uh, who are you, Eric? 
Yes, uh, let's try to start my presentation here. Uh, my name is Eric Dallen, and I have uh, uh, started uh, some companies within the forest industry. And today I'm an, also an external resource for Paper Province to for door opening, uh, both resources and contacts within the, within the industries. And uh, so that is one of my background. I also worked for Valmet. That was when I started, but uh, also in minor companies, mainly scale-up companies. Great. And well, we look forward to listen to what you are going to tell us, Eric. So all yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to talk about door opening to the industrial resources. Uh, and this is uh, uh, something that we can do for small companies. It's not available for the big companies. It's for the small companies. And there is two major things that I've seen when I was uh, working as an entrepreneur. One is realization of physical products are expensive. In our branch, it's different between uh, physical and software. In software, if you have an error, then it's just fix a line of code. But when you work with machinery, pilots, plants, products, both equipment is expensive and it's expensive to, to also develop them to, to work. So this is a very big cost. And another big cost, a big, uh, big uh, challenge for startups in this industry is that no one wants to be the first customer or partner. If you don't have any trust or rep reputation within the branch, then they only see you as a big risk and they say, come back in five to 10 years. So it's a big uh, wall to fight against to get into the industry. So is there a way to both cut risk, cost, without develop with the developing and time to, to enter the market and to get a functioning product and production? Is there? And that is what I'm going to talk about. And this is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, I will start some with the industry region that have a lot of these resources and networks that we can access and to use in smaller companies. It's a very important part. Also talk about go and industry entrance. And that is about how we can open doors to this industry and get access to free uh, industrial resources and door opening. And the last one is how to get in contact with, 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 with the, the entrance point, the door to start. So this is the agenda. And if you have questions, we can uh, take them afterwards or, or du during uh, the presentation. For me, uh, I work uh, in uh, Gothenburg, but when I look to Wormland, it's a little special. It's an area with a lot of big size production. There are machine building, plant building, export. This is uh, very significant with the industrial level of, uh, of uh, the forest bioeconomy. And these are resources and customers for a lot of our, for, for, for many startups. And what is a little special in this area is the concentration of a different size of mills, a lot of mills, a lot of combination with machine builders. We have Valmet, we have UMV, a lot of machine builders and experience in that. Suppliers of equipment that, to the industry, knowledge providers and test beds in a very, very, very small region. And that makes, that is a very good asset when you try to get into this industry. That is something that I have wanted to open. And uh, this industry is coordinated by the paper province. That is a cluster with 15 employees, it's door openers, it's branch communication and project management. But there is an, a very good organization to handle it. And it's more than hundred member companies and it's a lot of employees and big size companies within this area. And the coordination here is what we use in what we call Go. That is a working way to get access to these resources and coordinate resources to create a first viable product, first production 
or production scale up. So it's the entrance door to this industry. And when we look into the industry scale ups, it's a little special compared to, to software companies. It's extremely expensive. It is uh, come to activities and costs. You have a process development that costs a lot. You have machinery that costs a lot. It is expensive. We have plant facilities that is expensive. And also to get it work is really expensive. And then take it to the customer is even more expensive. So this is a very big chunk that is uh, special for our branch. And when we work with the Go model, the first thing is to downsize these, uh, these uh, activities by using production experience to enable that one. And that is doing less errors using the experience in the branch. So we can shorten the time to get it work and shorten the time for testing and so on. So this is a first step to minimize the amount of these works, maybe half a third. The next step is about cost reduction. If you're scale up and if you can borrow resources for process development, machinery and plant facility, you can downsize quite a lot and focus on what is important for you, the core. So this is something we want to assist with to get free resources in this area. And the end, the second, the third, the last part is the part that Leif Lückebeck will talk about, how to get money for this. And one thing is to make this part, the, the partner values visible. So, and when you have that visible, it's often easier to get private equity to invest because of the industry support, the money comes. And when you have the money, public funding will match up to this with money. So we can double the money. That leaves your amount of money to put in your starting capital very, very, very low. So this is how it works. So for a, for a 3 million euro project, 4 million euro project, where is partner, partner, this value is 1 million, 10 euro, private equity 10, 1 million, public funded 2 million euros, and you can only use 5 million, 5,000. 5, so this is a way to cut the cap, capital need for a lot, lot of euros, 10 million euros in this case to 5,000. In the beginning and also shorten the time. So this is a very effective way. And it's based by a step-by-step -step method that we have a resource opportunity workshop. How can we use the resources? Put a day of a first step project, appoint a door opener and guide to the industry and by steps going up. Uh, and to use the industries within it and open all the connections. An example, we have a very, very fantastic company that is Biosorb using, uh, have a bio-based uh, fuel absorber. The technology is based from uh, Cortege that is uh, in Stockholm. Started with a phone, phone call to me. Uh, we set up an internal resource and opportunity workshop and a Pointed a network enabler that is my passion uh, in Paper Province. Uh, we found out that Rotnerus is possible uh, the most most suitable uh, partner to, to, to work with uh, and support uh, Biosorb with uh, raw material. So we open the industry, prepared Rotnerus so they when we when they come. Uh, they thought Rotten Roos is a good company. <laughs> it's not something that is very strange. So we uh, used our connections to build trust and to meet a, a, a plant builder with a very small product uh, with uh, assistance of Pöyre and Montage. 
we get the first viable product in a borrowed environment. So that is the step. The next step they took by building this trust, initially a small scale up with the system of AFRI, RISE and Karls University and with the trust and industrial uh, partners they also get it easier to get venture capital for industrial scale up in, 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 uh, with, on the plant for Rotnerus. So this is a way and it's a very, very, very fast way to do it. This was less than one year. And I would say I've seen scale up companies trying to do this. The normal thing is to reach small scale production Normal costs around at least one million sick. Here, what was done with one tenth of the money, and it could take approximately five years to reach this point. And we shortened it to approximately one year. So, this is very successful to combine existing industry, existing suppliers, and new technology companies where Paper Province have a, a door opening role. A role. So we work with industry door opening, co partner consortium building, to get to the contacts, correct people, and also uh, funding and trust building. That is a result of the industrial contacts. So this is a very interesting model. And there is a large amount of industrial scale ups in, in this region that is working. Some is uh, inside the region, some is outside, but they're working with partners within the region. And a lot of these have the industrial perspective. The main benefits with uh, this model and this support that you can reduce the cost, risk and time up to one fifth by using uh, all the partners and smart funding structures, ways that the Leif will talk about. Uh, you will get trust and partners that enables public and private co-financing. So, because this is important and there's a lot of money in scaling up. So if you can put in this one, it's very, very good and get high um, values from, from, from the technology. The third thing is good that the people in the region, we can assist in getting very good production engineers that have worked with production. So uh, can in a very agile while need out, uh, an outcome position, a, produ uh, a production level. Uh, it's a difference between researchers and normal work. Uh, they don't feel ill about when the production don't work. If you work with production manager that have that experience, it goes much faster to get the production up and running. So this is good. And the last part is that it's almost free. This uh, It's mainly, if you want to have industry interest, it's a membership of the paper province, it's almost nothing, or uh, go through uh, uh, the test bed, uh, Ligno City, for example. So it's a lot of, uh, and this is uh, that I think is very important and I try to, to create this environment just to make sure that uh, scale-ups can have the same possibilities as large companies. And to get access, uh, you can contact Maria Ulmhult or Robert Gustafsson on Ligno City Rice or preferable Magnus Persson that is uh, uh, an uh, fully employee on, on paper province and also have a very big experience in assisting, uh, assisting companies and door opening and uh, also have a very strong network within both the machine builders like Valmet uh, and uh, the paper making. So that was a short introduction. I hope you, <laughs> you um, yeah. You enjoyed it and if you have any questions just bring them thank you thank you eric uh, very good i hope uh, all of us are inspired now and uh, also to spread the word about these possibilities 
That's great. Uh, we will let uh, Leif uh, talk as well and uh, give his presentation and afterwards we turn back to questions. Uh, so anyone who wants uh, to ask a question, just type them in the chat meanwhile. And Leif, welcome. How are you? You see if we get Leif on camera and online, there he is. Yes. Also in the forest, welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And the presentation is already there as well. Yeah. Can you see it? We can perfectly, yeah. and we hear you well also. And uh, please let us know, first of all, who, who are you? Yeah, uh, I'm happy to be here and to talk about one of my favorite subjects, uh, which uh, is also one of the aspects that uh, Eric mentioned. Uh, funding of innovative small and medium-sized enterprises. And uh, yeah, my name is Leif Lykkebeck and currently I work as uh, innovation and process leader at um, the biorefinery uh, innovation platform at, uh, at uh, Rice Process Zone. But I also work with the overall SME strategy uh, at, at RISE, which includes cooperation with the uh, regional innovation systems and, yeah, and where funding of small and medium-sized enterprises is a crucial part. Too. So I've been working with uh, innovative small and medium-sized enterprises from different uh, perspectives during my entire working life. I've taken my own startup from idea to industrialization and exit, and I've been responsible for funding of innovative SMEs at the energy agency, also worked for large forest industry companies uh, such as Asidoman and Sveasko with cooperation between large and small companies. So, but today we will focus on public funding of innovative uh, SMEs. So. We look forward, Leif. Thanks for your introduction and we will listen to your presentation. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, so I will talk about the public funding of innovative uh, SMEs with the focus area bioeconomy with climate relevance. Uh, so when it comes to long-term reduction of climate gases through innovation, uh, public funding is a major financial source uh, with a lot of money available. Um, but it is also a fragmented landscape, I would say, and SMEs uh, often need guidance uh, to find the right money. And here in this presentation, I will discuss uh, only funding of uh, SMEs and their commercial initiatives and not funding of pure uh, research activities, uh, where RICE uh, sometimes also can, can support uh, uh, yeah, companies. Uh, So, uh, why does society support innovation in SMEs? Uh, and what is the expected return on investment? Uh, uh, you can say that private investors, they want uh, money back when they make an investment. And public investors, uh, when we're talking about subsidies, they want something else. Uh, they want new sustainable solutions uh, with the potential to reduce uh, climate gases. Uh, they want Swedish uh, export and they want Swedish jobs. Uh, and also you can say that innovative SMEs are expected to play a key role in achieving these long-term effects uh, in society. Um, and my son and I, we are sometimes arguing if, uh, if Bitcoin is the new currency and I claim that uh, um, the potential to reduce uh, climate gases is the new um, currency. Uh, I don't know which one of us is, is right, but if you can prove that your innovation has the CO2 reducing potential and the market potential and is scalable, there is plenty of public money available anyway. So what activities uh, can generally be supported? Um, <clears throat> develop and verify a prototype uh, is normally uh, possible to support with public funding. 
It could be from the early stages with a minimum viable product, it could be a prototype, and it could be in the later uh, stages with full-scale uh, demos. So, but also, which is sometimes forgotten, is that also the development and the verification of uh, manufacturing methods or production lines is also possible to, to support. Uh, and also intellectual property rights, uh, which is uh, sometimes underutilized, I think. Uh, also life cycle analysis, focusing on climate gases. Um, it's important to, to prove to, to the investors that, that you really can uh, reduce um, climate gases. So also type approval or business plans and preparations for the market uh, introduction. Uh, though it's also important to, uh, to know what activities cannot be supported. Uh, and some examples are investments in commercial production equipment, sales activities, especially if it's in other countries, and establishment of distribution networks is not also not possible to support, though no rule without ex uh, exceptions. It is often possible to do some sales activities uh, using the exception, uh, the minimis, for example, and uh, some other exceptions. Uh, but that's, that has to be handled case by case. Uh, Okay, so what are the most common criteria to achieve and, and to, to, to get this money? Uh, first of all, I would say that it's important to prove that you have a climate gas reduction potential innovation. Um, and the best is if you can prove, if you have an independent assessor that, that says so. Uh, the second thing is, of course, like for other innovations, that you have to prove that you have a customer value, market potential, and the, that the innovation is scalable. Also, that it, it's unique and has, has a potential for intellectual property rights. So, uh, then, when it comes to te technological readiness level, if you're familiar with that, it should be between four and eight, preferably. Uh, that means that the, the level one to three, which is research activities, are normally excluded, and also uh, the level nine. Uh, which is when the innovation is proven in operational uh, environment. Uh, that is uh, where you where you not, no longer has have any any development risk left. Uh, so there has to be there has to be a certain risk in the project, but it has it can't be too early. Uh, this, the next criteria is private co-funding, and often around fifty percent is required, sometimes more. You need also to prove that you have a strong team, uh, preferably with the with a track record. The big advantage, if you if you have an established corporation with a potential large scale customer or in, industrial uh, partner. Uh, and one last thing is the gender perspective, uh, which uh, has to be dealt with, uh, and that should be taken seriously. Uh, and, and it could be when it comes to ownership of the company, when it comes to the, uh, the mix of the management team or the project team, but it could also be the question who benefits from the future use of the innovation. Uh, you, finally, you could also say that it's an advantage to work with an independent uh, partner such as RICE when it comes to, for example, uh, life cycle analysis uh, connected to, to CO2, uh, type approval, but also in, when it comes to independent testing of the prototype or the production line. Uh, I will give you some examples of possible funding agencies within this thematic area. Uh, when it comes to uh, to public funding, uh, of course, the Swedish Energy Agency is uh, is important. Uh, also, Vinova, uh, Almi Företags partner, um, are also going in this direction more and more. 
Uh, so this is public funding when it comes to subsidies, uh, but we also have public funding connected to venture capital from, for example, Almi Invest Green Tech Fund, Inno Energy, NEFCO and others. Uh, then of course we have pri private funding, venture capital or equity, uh, where a growing number of uh, actors are, are um, entering. Some examples are EFT Partners, SEB, Green Tech Fund, Inca Green Tech, uh, Stena Renewables, Nordgren and others. And finally, we have the EU funding with the Innovation Fund, European Investment Bank, uh, EIC, Accelerator, Eurostars. Uh, and I would say that depending on how mature the company is um, and what your next step is, that is what kind of activities you are planning, it's important to approach the right funding agency and the right call. Otherwise you risk to waste your time going for the wrong money, uh, but you can also get stuck with the with the wrong kind of money and the wrong kind of owners, uh, um, which could be a really big problem in the long run. So it's, it's important to go for the right kind of money. Uh, and you also need to start planning for funding well in advance. Uh, it takes a lot of time and it's a lot of hard work to, to get this money, of course. So. Some upcoming calls, just a few examples. Um, from the Swedish Energy Agency, you have one call, Konceptutveckling av nya energiinnovationer, where you can get subsidies of 250,000 uh, sec. Uh, probably it opens uh, this autumn, next time. Uh, it's a very early call, uh, where you can have very early innovations. So. Um, when the innovation is a little bit, little bit more mature, verifiering of new energy innovationer, uh, two million crowns um, in subsidies is possible to get. Probably it opens next spring. You have the BioPlus uh, program where you can uh, apply for up to five million sec. Uh, opens probably uh, next, next spring, late spring, probably. Uh, then you also have Pilot or Demo uh, for the really big projects at the energy agency, uh, where you can apply for projects uh, that need more than, uh, uh, more than 5 million sec. Opens probably this winter. Then Vinova has uh, bio innovation. Uh, with several uh, calls um, the coming year. More than this, there are several other general SME calls uh, where CO2 reducing innovations often has an advantage as well um, in general nowadays. So that's also another uh, possibility, of course. So. Okay. Uh, in order to guide an SME to the right funding, following information is, uh, is needed. How mature is, is the company and the innovation and what is their next step? For early projects like seed projects, uh, the next step could be concept development or, um, or um, a minimum viable product. Uh, early startups, the next uh, activity could be to verify the prototype, preferably together with a customer. Later startups, um, next activity could be, next step could be a full-scale demo or a development of a production method or a production line. And in the growth phase, um, the next activity could be production scale up and internationalization. Uh, in the growth phase, it's difficult to find public funding uh, based on subsidies. So here you have to go for public uh, venture capital or private venture capital or equity. So 
So um, finally, if funding is one of your main challenges, we can set up an initial meeting uh, if the company and innovation has the required potential and quality, I can then guide you to the right fund funding agency or to the right call. I can introduce you to the main criteria or guide you to application support, uh, depending on which call we're talking about. I can also give you feedback once you have written the application. So um, feel free to contact me for a continued discussion. Uh, concerning funding of your of your company. Thank you. Thank you, Leif. Uh, hope we have uh, presented lots of inspiration. Uh, Eric, I hope you are still with us as well. If you want to turn on your camera, we, we will be able to see you also. Uh, yes. Good. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, if, if uh, the two of you would uh, be in the position of, of starting up a company, what would be the, the main uh, focus of, of yours? The first step you would take, Eric, what, what would you do tomorrow if you have a, an idea within bioeconomy? What would you be the first to focus on? Uh, the first focus I would start with is to get some kind of contact within the industry that is in this case i will try to contact the paper province if i need if i if i don't have the, that connections by myself and also talk about the possibilities and with that as a starting point to get some idea of possible partners i will then talk to to financing just because this finance is much much stronger if i have some big company brand names with me. It gives much more trust and, and possibilities to, to, to get, uh, get successful and get the first step running. Good tips. And, and Leif, if you would be in the same situation, you have an idea and you are starting up your next company, what would you do tomorrow? Um, I would make sure that it's, uh, I have a value creating and CO2 reducing uh, concept. And maybe I would develop a minimum viable product and check if I can, I can uh, protect it uh, with IP. Then I would do as Eric says, I would contact the customer. That would be the next step to check that the, I'm on the right, right track. Good. And what would be the biggest challenge you think, Leif, you, you would focus within the next future starting up a company? from scratch? Um, to make sure that you you develop something that's interesting and value creating for, for the customer. That's the key, I would say. Yeah, and, and Eric, do you, do you agree or you have a... Yes, that's, that's an extremely important thing that it creates values, but a lot of companies also have problems. In, it, it takes a lot more cost than they expect when scaling up. So they run out of capital and uh, such. And that is more a practical issues, but that, that, is, that is a fact. You underestimate both the cost and also the time to industrial market. It's very easy to think that if you just have a good, uh, good values of, of, your, of your product, people uh, will buy. Well, that isn't true. Very few will be the first customer. So to have that in perspective and also start to, to work with customers very, very early, because it takes time and, and it's more tricky than you believe. And uh, the fact that we are in a pandemic right now, I mean, if you are a startup, you likely do a risk analysis at some stage. And, and right now, the, the, the threat from, from outside that you can't control with a pandemic. Have, have you experienced uh, startups uh, facing this and, and how have they handled it? Yes, what I've seen, is if you're going to talk to industry, it has been quite complicated because you have not been able to get inside and have customers meetings. So, so, so that is a difficult. Now it's starting to opening. Uh, so that has been a, a, a really challenge. Uh, so that is a negative effect. A good effect though, is that the customer have been more 
confident uh, to to web meetings and so on, and that makes it possible to to reach a lot more customers in early phase and also to discuss solution type of solution and build consortium and build initial projects uh, that is a little easier in, in some perspective but you can't really get uh, get into the mills so it's more or less uh, so, so it's both pro and cons good do you agree Leif? how have yeah. you experienced yeah i agree with with eric and i think also it's it's easier to, and hopefully it will continue like that to to make digital contact directly with the with the customer which was uh, quite difficult uh, earlier and, and what we do today here is also digital uh, this wouldn't have come up two years ago then we would be sitting in a conference room somewhere uh, with a with a physical audience and now we are talking to a screen and and uh, reach out to, to many people at the same time being uh, not present in the same room uh, so that's a benefit also and if you come from abroad, I mean, we are in Sweden and in, in Värmland, particularly with the Ligno City. Uh, Leif, is there uh, any specific hurdles if you are not a Swedish company originally? Uh, do you have any tips for, for a startup coming from outside of Sweden? Yeah, come to Sweden. We have plenty of uh, public funding for, for uh, companies registered in, in, in Sweden. <laughs> Good. And, and, and space also compared to some yeah, space. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, what do you say? Uh, I lost you there. I don't, internet, uh, short internet shutout. So I couldn't tell the question there. <laughs> okay, we, we repeat it. If you are a startup but from abroad, not being Swedish originally, uh, what, what, what's the biggest challenge to come to Sweden or, or the biggest uh, benefit also? Uh. The, 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 I don't know that biggest challenge, but it, but it's very hard. Uh, you need to get to get inside the industry, and that is always a, a tricky part if you're trying to do do business and so on. So it's very good to get in contact with some kind of these of organizations like Paper Province or Business Värmland or or Ligno City to access and get inside the network and get become a part of the industry fast. So, so that is a challenge, but then to use the, the tools that exist, then, then it's much, 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 much easier than it's even though simple. Right. And, and Leif, uh, you that have the experience of, of applications and, and uh, written applications to a call, uh, is there any percentage how many get approved or does it differ from, from call to call? Uh, yeah, it, it, it differs a lot and also normally uh, uh, the projects have to reach a certain level uh, anyway uh, independent of the the independent of the the um, um, amount available so yeah and, and the trick you, you told before with your presentation is to find the right call to, to, to it is yeah. Uh, yeah I think that's an important message. Mm. And also make sure that you fulfill all the the criteria, uh, uh, and that you know how to how to handle them and how to, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I will also, say if I have been in the situation also in the beginning, how to write an application, and that could be quite tricky, and also to find the right call, so you so you get uh, so you will be successful. So. A good thing here there is to talk to to Leif uh, or, or or someone else in that role to get a guidance in what is the important thing in an application to make it uh, to make it good and so on and also what to, to choose. Uh, when you are in a startup company, it's very easy to think that it's good to tell in applications that you are very close to the market, but in reality you need to position yourself right to get the governmental funding and there is uh, advisors like Leif looking back very very important otherwise you will fail in in, in just doing the non-correct applications so they're very important also to discuss how should I form it also if it's possible to how to create consortium and so on it, it, it's a skilled task to do that and, and it's very good to have people like Leif assisting in that yeah. one advice would be not to try to adjust your uh, your plans uh, in order to to fit to a certain application it's better to a certain call 
it's better to find the right call that fits with your your plans. So. That's a good advice. And and uh, time consuming or not? How, how do you have any uh, experience on that? Do, uh, do you, is it often underestimated the effort you need to put in to write an application, or the other way around? It depends on if you have everything in order in your in your company. Uh, it could be quite fast. Um, if you don't, <laughs> that is quite tricky. Yeah. And, and then uh, uh, sorry, uh, like, uh, I have a little short there. I think it's very good also to start with the smaller application for the smaller amounts, but because you build up. A credibility for 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 at, at these organization. So you start with a small one, and then a larger project, and then a larger product. Uh, and also you get used to fill in application when uh, because with the big money requires very good applications. So if you start with a small target, a small money, and also learn how 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 this system works. Also very good advice, uh, indeed. And uh, if, if I am a startup and write my application uh, to a certain call, how long do I have to wait before I, I, I receive any money? Like... It depends uh, a lot. Uh, normally it takes quite a long time, and, um, but it's, it, it, it almost always says in the, in the, um, in, in, in the text the call, description of the call, but at least three months, uh, often more, unfortunately. Uh, I've been working with quite a lot of scale-up company and, and quite an important thing is always to work with actual business development, product development, parallel with, with the financing. So we always have finance, but of course it takes time before you, 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 you can get money or venture capital. And if you don't do this in parallel, you will, uh, end up uh, end of money and and your your value as a company will go very very down and uh, so always work with this one in parallel and don't focus on one application have a lot of things working in in parallel so you never run out of money and also combine uh, venture capital private venture capital with with, with uh, official so it's so it's so it's a uh, and I think mostly big city startups is better on this one than uh, than in the smaller cities. Right. I think we should better get better. Right. We have uh, a question uh, coming in. Uh, would you ever consider investing in startups in the United States, Leif? Uh, w with uh, uh, public funding. We assume so, because uh, that's what we talk about. So uh, no, that's yeah. that's not possible. They have to be registered, and and uh, the IP has to be connected to Sweden. So um, yeah, that's. But there is another solution that's to come to Sweden, as as mentioned. Yes. So and that is also good to have these discussions with with uh, because if you find the resources central for for developing. That is the way to do it. So uh, there's always ways to find out uh, and, and how to solve it. But you have to discuss it with with people who knows uh, the ways to, to to get forward. Yeah, and and we all 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 the three of us like to talk. So so uh, give us a call and uh, we we talk about it and see what we can find as a solution. Eric, you had uh, some extra information about industry entrance. Would you like to give us some extra about that? I can talk a little about extra about that. I had some slides that I can try you want to, to share them, yeah. <laughs> I can try to share them if, uh, let's see here. That is industry entrance. That is a part of, the, of, of, uh, of, of the Go. Let's see how to, to share. I know it's not that easy always. Let's see. But training makes the master, right? Yes. Now, first I started to share, I hope. Share. There you and go. I, well, there I go. And I'll try to make this one big also. 
an industry entrance. It's a part of how to come from an outsider. If you are in a scale up or new to this branch, you need to be become a part of the industry. Otherwise, you won't uh, <laughs> you won't get in. You will find out yourself. The customers want to business to you. And also when you work with vendors, it's very, very common when you try, when you talk to a consultant, that they consider you or, or, or uh, like Siemens or ABB, they continue to uh, see you as very small, they see you as very risky and uninteresting. So you have to pay in advance and you will get their worst consultant, <laughs> not get the best, and also uh, pay much more for equipment because you are unknown. So this is a problem when you don't are a part of the interest industry in early part. And industry entrance is a way to change this one, to, to come from an outsider to become an insider. So, uh, and the idea there is to use the networks to, to enable you inside to the in industry, to introduce you to the industry. So uh, if you get uh, in contact with the paper province and you are a scale-up company, you can get a, a door opener or a network enabler we have that will assist you into this one. So you can get access to, to re these resources and things that you can, we do, one is door opening that we just uh, contact Billerud, for example, or a, a plant manager or a production managers and pre-talk about your technology and says, this is a good technology, you should listen to them and also discuss uh, maybe first solutions, first projects to get into the industry. Another part is industry culture training. In this industry, it has been around for 100 years. There are things to do, uh, ways to do things. And if you don't do them correctly, they will just think that you're a big risk. So by talking to, to industry people off the record or, or in our network, you can know how to, to, to get in con uh, to, to work in this industry, use the right words, the right uh, technologies and so on. And another thing that is very important is insider prepared sales and tech meetings. It's like for, for Biosorb. If you have a technology that is interesting, we get to uh, learn about it. We can talk to selected uh, industry people that says this is a good technology, you should listen to them. And we can also prepare some values that we see and, and, and the tech company don't see. So these are things that is important. And the last thing that is also about being inside the industry, industry is to make media and the branch uh, press write about you to have it so we get visibility because if you're visible in the branch people will think you are a less risk and more willingly to to invest so we have, have an example there that assisted modvion for example them uh, into the industry that is they are making uh, uh, tree-based, uh, wood-based uh, windmill towers, full scale. And with our press channels and press releases through our channels, uh, they got into Bloomberg, get uh, written about them. And when Bloomberg has written about them, a lot of suppliers that they had tried to reach but have ignored it, starts to call them instead. So by doing this one, you can increase the value of your company, but also turn around the how the boot business is going. The big company starts to call you instead of you are calling the big companies and they ignore you. So it's a 
complete, so these are very, very in, uh, important things. And that is something that we call industry entrance. Very good. We take that with us. And um, thank you both, uh, Leif and Eric, for today's inspiration and information. And uh, this webinar, as we previously said, will be uh, present on Lignos webpage in the soon future. And uh, next webinar will be the 7th of October. And uh, we will talk about uh, Lignin as a part of Future Asphalt. Uh, that's the theme of the next webinar, which is rather interesting. Uh, Leif, uh, do you want to make a comment? Uh, your last tips? Please, please, uh, please come, feel free to contact me if you want to discuss uh, funding issues. So. Thank you. Hmm? And uh, Eric, what do you want to say as yes. final sentence? And if you are trying to get into this industry and or, or running a scale-up company to, to, to get access of industrial resources, just contact me or Magnus Persson or, or someone else in, in uh, Paper Province or Maria or at Ligno City. That is also an entry point. Very good. Thank you both. And uh, thank you to everyone uh, who's been listening. And thank you to uh, everyone behind the screen here. We are uh, recording from uh, Paper Province Innovation Park here in uh, Karlstad. And uh, with that, I say bye. Thank you. And uh, see you next time, hopefully. So thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.